Hi, welcome to this particular tutorial where I'm going to show you how we can determine the nature of stationary points when we've got an implicit equation. Now, in an earlier video, and you can see that video just by clicking on this link that's displayed here, or if you're looking at this video on my website, examsolutions.net, then the video for working out the stationary points for this equation is directly above this one. But we found out by differentiating the equation up here, we got dy by dx equaled x minus 2y over y plus 2x. And we found those stationary points by putting this equation equal to 0 and solving for x and y. And we got our stationary points then at 4, 2 and minus 4, minus 2. So the purpose of this tutorial then is to determine the nature of the stationary points. And I'm going to look at the second differential method, d2y by dx squared in other words, where if d2y by dx squared turns out to be greater than zero when we substitute our values for x and y in, then the point is a local minimum. And if d2y by dx squared is less than zero, then it's a local maximum. But the problem comes in generally differentiating equations like this again. We could leave it as it stands and use the quotient rule, but that generally is quite cumbersome for something like this. So what I'd want to do is get rid of the fraction here. Okay, You don't have to do this. You could always experiment, do it by the quotient rule and compare the methods. But I'm going to get rid of the fraction y plus 2x by multiplying both sides by the y plus 2x. Well, let's just call this equation here 1. And we can say that from 1, if we rearrange it, then we're going to get y plus 2x multiplied then by dy by dx is going to equal x minus 2y. Now I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x as it stands. Okay, I'll put diff with respect to x. This will enable me to head towards getting d2y by dx squared. So if I differentiate this here, I've got to treat this as the a product, okay? So I've got to use the product rule. So we'll start with y plus 2x, we'll put that down. We've got therefore y plus 2x, and we multiply this by the differential of dy by dx with respect to x. And if we differentiate dy dx with respect to x, we get d2y by dx squared, okay? Then we have to plus, and then we've got dy by dx multiplied by the differential with respect to x of y plus 2x. So if we differentiate y with respect to x, that's going to be another dy by dx. So just put that in there. Okay. And if we differentiate 2x with respect to x, that will be just simply plus 2. Okay, so that's the product rule for differentiating this first term here. Then we've got equals, and we differentiate the x with respect to x, and that's going to be 1. And if we differentiate minus 2y with respect to x, we get minus 2, and then dy by dx, okay, through the implicit differentiation. Now we need to make d2y by dx squared the subject. But you could rearrange this, but it seems a bit pointless because what we know is that we're going to try and find the value of d2y by dx squared at, say, this stationary point and this stationary point. So let's just look at this stationary point, first of all. We know that when x is 4, y equals 2. But the other thing is that at this point, we know that it's a stationary point, so dy by dx would have equaled 0. So we might as well put in that dy by dx equals 0. And we can substitute this into this equation now. And if we do that, 
Okay, we therefore have y, which is 2, plus 2 times x, 2 fours are 8, 2 plus 8 is 10, so you've got 10 times d2y by dx squared. Now dy by dx is 0, so 0 times anything here is going to be 0. That leaves us with the equals 1. And then we've got 2 times 0 for dy dx. Well, that's 0. So we just get a nice simple equation. So no need to rearrange this for d2y by dx squared. So what we see is that it follows that, OK, that if I rearrange this for d2y by dx squared, what we have is it equals 1 tenth. And 1 tenth is a positive value, it's greater than 0. So what does that mean? Well, clearly if our value is greater than 0, it's telling us that therefore our stationary point at 4, 2 okay, is a local minimum. So we'll put that in, that therefore 4, 2 is a local minimum. OK, well, we've got that one. Now we've just got to test our other point here, minus 4, minus 2. So again, we know that when x equals minus 4, y equals minus 2. And also, dy by dx is equal to 0 at that stationary point. So if we substitute these values now back into this equation here, we therefore have, well, we've got y, which is minus 2, times 2 times x, which is minus 4. That's going to come to minus 2 minus 8, which is minus 10. Minus 10 times d2y by dx squared. And then for the second term here, dy dx is equal to 0, so that's going to take that out, OK? Then we're left with equals the 1. And then here we've got dy dx is 0, so this term goes. So if we rearrange this, it follows that d2y by dx squared equals minus 1 tenth. A negative number, so less than 0. So what does this imply? Well, if we've got a negative value for d2y of dx squared, we've got a local maximum. So in summary, we've got therefore minus 4 minus 2 is a local maximum. And we can check this out against the graph. Not that you expected necessarily to draw the graph here, but I've got uh, graph drawn and here it is. So you can see the local minimum here at 4, 2 and the local maximum at minus 4, minus 2. So I hope that's given you some idea then how you can go about the second differential method when you've got an implicit equation. Okay, so that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial.